Hello and welcome to our day three video for Excel. Um, today we're going to be going over functions and formulas and how these can be an extremely useful tool to, to summarize as well as to display your data and to make Excel do a lot of the work for you. Um, so we can we can get started. The basics of, of function syntax is that it always begins with an equals sign. If we were to type in an equal sign into this cell up here, then this indicates to Excel that we want it to calculate something. We we want it to replace what we type with with a new value. So I will just quickly add some values here that we can work with. All right. So we can over here we can type in an equal sign and now we can add in any any cell references that we want and and add them together. So this means that we will be taking the value from say this cell A1 and A2 and add them together. So we can type in into our our formula we can type in A1 you can see it comes up with a little box and plus A2 and I will do plus A3 as well. And this can go on as long as as long as you want and once you hit enter then it will total all of these together. Now, this is a, an extremely useful thing. Um, this is definitely a, a very simple application. It's pretty easy to add 1 plus 2 plus 3. Um, however, it can become an extremely powerful thing, especially with, with these cell references. Um, since we reference the values in these cells, instead of actually just typing in 1 plus 2 plus 3 into our formula, which we could do, um, here we can now change the value of this cell. So if we were to change this to 10 and hit enter, now it updates our our value in in this formula cell as well, um, because a1 is now equal to 10 instead of 1. All right. Now the next thing that we can do is we can we can add a a formula. So a formula is a pretty much a a pre-programmed um, function in in Excel that will do something for us. So in this situation we can type in sum um, equals sum, sorry, and this uh, will bring up a, a formula that we can use to total different numbers. So if you type in equals sum and then left parentheses or open parentheses. Now it sees says you can just type in number one, comma number two, etc. So however many numbers you want to, to total, add them in separated by commas. Now this can either be actual numbers like you could type in one, comma two, and then hit enter and it'll it'll add those all up. Or we can come back and edit this. Or this could be cell references. So we can do the same thing. We can do a one comma a2 comma a3 total up the same cells as the as this the cell above and if you hit enter now you can see the total is 15 um, or we can even type in a range so in this next cell I'll type equals sum again open parentheses and now we'll start with a1 but if we want it to total all the way down to a10 we don't actually have to add in or type individually each of those cells. We can just type in A1 colon A10. And this will grab all, all of that column. You can see that it gives you a little visualization of, of what it's taking. And then hit enter. And it totals the entire thing for us very simply. Um, so this is definitely the 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 beginning of, of the power of functions is that that one, they, they can do a lot of work for us very quickly, and they can also be self-updating. So once again, if we change any of these values, you can see that our third sum function is updating at the same time. To accommodate all of these values and we don't have to do anything else to this function, it just works automatically. 
Um, there are also a couple of other other easy functions to use. You can you can do the average function, average, um, and we can type in the same range a1 colon a10, and it will calculate the average for us. Um, so yes, this is this is a very very simple way to use it, but also a very a very easy thing to do, and and very useful as well. I've also got this this other sheet that we can we can sort of play around with. This just has some data about the planets um, that we can test and and run some some functions on to to practice. Um, we can also if you if you look at this data you, you can see that we have a lot of different numbers um, as well as some yes no answers. Um, so it should be some good data to work with. The first function that we can go over is the if function. So this is a logical test uh, and, and decision that Excel will be making. So you can, you can tell it that if this cell is equal to, to this value, say, then, then print one thing. But if it is not, print another thing. So I can give you a quick example here. If we come into our cell here, type equals if, open parentheses. Now we can have our logical test. So uh, what we can do is we can test for this global magnetic field. So we can say if this cell is equal to yes, then, then type something. So if S3, we can type S3, that equals sign, oops, I didn't type a three. Let's try that again. S3 equals, and then open quote, then YES close quote. Now this, these quotes are just telling Excel to to treat this text as separate from anything else. Don't don't try to to add in any different functions or formulas uh, in here. This is this is just text that we want to compare. Now if we insert a column, we will move on into the next argument of the, our if function, which is the value if true. So this is the value that you want this cell to, to be if, if this condition or this logical test is true. So we can, we can type some text here in, enclosed in quotes once again. Um, we can say has magnetic field. And then close quote comma, and then the value if false does not have magnetic field. And then if you hit enter, it will evaluate this and decide between these two values which it should print. Now because this says yes, now this cell says has a magnetic field. If we were to copy and paste this down below, you can see now it, it evaluates as false because this cell does not say yes. Um, and this will continue on down. Um, this is also highlights a, a powerful thing of functions and that's, that's what they, they change every time you copy and paste them. So if you can see right here this, this if function up in the function bar says s if s3 equals yes. Now if we move down one function just with the down arrow, you can see now it's referencing s4 instead. So as we copy and paste this, Excel is predicting that that okay, we want to move down our references as well to test these different functions. If you continue to move down, you can see it continues to count up to reference these different cells. And this is a super useful thing as you just saw, because we can create large large summaries of data that reference a lot of data very quickly. Um, then we can add one more thing to to our if functions, um, which is called nesting. So this is really just the concept of of creating another path in in our if function. So we can say if uh, 
Okay, so we can we can add an if function that that says if this planet has a global magnetic magnetic field and if it has a ring system, do this. And if not, do something else. So it's it's just creating multiple paths in our if function and creating creating two steps to this decision rather than one. So we can add we can replace this value if true to another if statement. If so if we delete that and type in if open parentheses. Now we have another test that we need. We can do R3. R3 equals yes. Oops. Um, then then the value if true has rings and magnetic field and then comma value if false so has magnetic field then the close parentheses because we are completing this if statement that we just added and so this all fits in the value if true so it's to evaluate this if statement it looks at first s3 right here and it says does s3 equal yes and if so then it will go to this value if true which is another if statement so now it evaluates if r3 is equal to yes then it will will display this text or if not then this text however if s3 is s3 does not equal yes then it will jump to the value if false and print does not have magnetic field. So we can hit enter on this and it tells us this has a magnetic field um, but it does not have rings which is correct exactly what we should expect and it, once again if we copy this down now we can see that we have several different different results that have come up. So we have has magnetic field, does not have magnetic field, and has rings and magnetic field. So these are just creating multiple paths that our if statement can take and two step decisions where it decides one thing and then decides another, uh, one after another, to, to determine what should be displayed in this cell. So now we can move on to some lookup functions. Um, the first one that we are going to go over is called vlookup. Um, so this is a vertical lookup function and this function is useful especially when you have large charts of data that may may extend on for for hundreds or, or thousands of, of rows. Um, it makes it easy to find data and to to display it in in a um, central location. So right right now this this table is pretty pretty small, so it's easy to find things, um, but it's it's easy to practice with as well. So we can we can compare and make sure that everything is going right. Um, but it becomes becomes critical to to know how to do when you're working with large amounts of data. So we can come down to these cells below and I'll just click into this one right here and we can type in equals v lookup open parentheses. So now this gives us this prompt that shows us what needs to go into this v lookup function to make it work. We need a lookup value. We need a table or where to find the lookup value. Uh, and then we need a column index. So this is the, the column in the table that we want it to return. Um, and then we'll get to range lookup later. When we, but we can start with lookup value. So if I want to look up the value of Mars, I can type in quote Mars, close quote, comma. Now we're into the table array. So this is, this is where to look for this, this data. And we want A3 to... S 
12. So we can either type that in as a as a, a range a3 colon s12 or we can just come up and click and drag down until we've selected the whole thing. And you can hit another comma and the column index number is going to be going to determine what data is returned. So if we want it to look up Mars, we nev don't necessarily want it to return the value Mars. Uh, we want it to maybe return the mass of Mars. So this is in the second column of our array. So if we type in a 2, then it will return the mass of Mars. 2, then another column, which will bring up th these different options that we have for our range lookup. And these are either true or false. If you don't type anything, it will default to true. But if you want an exact match, you need to select or type false. So we'll go false because we are working with text, and so we want an exact match. Um, and then if you hit enter, then it will run the lookup, and it will return the value that you specified. So we, we want it to, wanted it to look for Mars and then return the mass, which it looks like it did exactly that. Now, we can do a couple more things to make this VLOOKUP function a little bit more powerful. One thing that we can do is we can, we can take this, this Mars text out of, the, out of the function itself, so we don't have to edit the function every time we want to, to change it. So right now, if we wanted to look up a different planet, we would have to type in Earth into this function and then hit Enter which that, that is functional, but it is a little bit a little bit difficult. And it can be easy to mess up your function while typing into it. So what we can do is we can type in earth here on the left, and we can change this function to reference that cell right on the left. So we want to reference A18 for our lookup value. And if you hit enter, it does the exact same thing. It looks up Earth and then returns the mass. Uh, but now, if we want to change the planet that it looks for, we can just change this text right here to Pluto. And it automatically updates our VLOOKUP for this new planet. planet. Which is a wonderful thing. So, if we want to look up more than than one value. If we want to, to, instead of only returning the mass, if we want to return, say, this entire chart or or several of these columns, we we can do that very easily with a with a V lookup. Um, and but there is one more step that we need to do because we don't want this lookup value to ever change. So it's it's like back here with our with our if functions. Oops, I'm messing things up. Um, with our if functions, when we copied it down, that S3 or R3 changed to different values. Um, but we don't want that to happen with with our VLOOKUP because we always want it to be looking for Jupiter and we always want it to be looking in this array right here um, of A3 to, to S12. Um, but if we were to copy and paste this function right now, then these values would change and we'd probably have to edit our, our function every time. There is something called absolute reference, however, that will help us to avoid this. We can, we can tell Excel, like, when we, when we copy and move this function, don't change this value. And that's just done with a simple dollar sign in front of, in front of the value. So this dollar sign A says, don't ever change this column A whenever we we move it horizontally. We can also add the dollar sign in front of the 18, which prevents it from changing when we move it vertically. And we can also do the same thing to our chart right here. So A3 and S12. We can add dollar signs into each of these to say, don't ever change these references. Always look in these places for the values that we need. So if you hit enter, you see that nothing, nothing changes. But now if we were to copy and paste this function all the way over, you can see that it's it's now exactly the same every time. None of the values changed, which is partially what we want, but it, it's not very useful to have 1898 every single time. And that comes because we have the same column index number every time. 
So this time, in, we want to reference column 3. Um, and then if we go to the next cell, we can reference column 4, column 5, and so on and so forth. And if you look at the data down below as I'm doing this, you can see that, that it's changing every time to look at these new columns that I've, that I've inserted. And I'll just delete these um, because it's pretty, pretty easy to, to fill in the rest. Um, and it looks like I did mess up on one of them. But now if we were to change Jupiter to another planet, let's say we'll go to Saturn. Now everything updates perfectly. So now we're getting the mass, the diameter, the density, the gravity, the escape velocity, the rotational period, the length of the day, and so on and so forth. All, all because we have this one, one value that it's looking for in our table. And then it returns the different columns associated with this data. So this VLOOKUP function is extremely useful when, when trying to search through data and find find information related to to a certain number or phrase. Um, there's also a, a an HLOOKUP function, which once you know VLOOKUP is very easy to to understand because it it does everything that VLOOKUP does, but it does it horizontally. So it looks up left to right instead of vertically. There is another another function that we can use to look up, which is, depending on your situation, can can be a little bit more useful and a little bit more powerful, and that is the index function. Um, the index function itself is is not extremely useful. Um, if you type in index, then it equals index, then it will bring up our our guide. Um, so index takes an array. So where where to look for? We'll just grab all of this once again, and then it takes a row number and a column number. So what index does it is it it goes to the row number and column number in your your array that you've just specified, and then it returns the value or prints the value that was that was in that location. So if we type five comma five for row five and column five within relative to this this cell that we, or this range that we gave it, hit enter, it returns 3.7. So that's right here. You can see that it's in the, the fifth column and the fifth row, um, which it did exactly what it's supposed to, um, but it's not the most useful thing right now. Um, however, it, it can become a lot more useful when we, when we provide this row number with, by by calling another function. Um, the function that we can we can use is is the match function. So if you type in equals match, it brings up the match function. And this is a lookup func function that returns the the column number that your value was found in. So we can say lookup value, we'll just type it in hard code at this time, um, Mars and then where to look for it. And we'll just give it this column right here because we know exactly where it's going to be found, A3 to A12. And then the match type. Um, this time it's not true or false, but it's it's the same idea. One, zero, or ne negative one. And we'll go with zero because we want an exact match. Um, and then close it out. So it looked for Mars in this column and it returns five because Mars is in the fifth column, or, or fifth, fifth row, sorry. Um, so you can see that this becomes a lot more useful when, when we provide the row number with the match function. So if we were to, right now, change this five and instead reference the cell below, K19, then now, it, it does the same thing because we have the same the same value. Um, however, we can we can now change this by changing our lookup value. 
which I will just quickly change this to J19 so that we don't have to edit our function. Now this, this J19 needs a value. We can type one of our planets. We can type in Mercury. And now it searches for these, these values. And if you change this, then the values will be updated. This match value is not very important. It's not, not entirely relevant data to us. Um, we don't we don't need to know where um, where in our our table this this value is. We just need to know the value itself. So what we can do is instead of instead of referencing this function down down here, we can just type the match function directly into the index function. So I'll create another one over here and create our reference lookup cell. And then let's start with our function. So we can type in equals index, open parentheses, and now A3 to S12 is our, our um, array. And, oops, and we probably want to make these absolute references. So we can expand this function later. All right, now our row number is going to be provided by the match function. So we can just start typing in match, open parentheses, and now we've started our match function. Lookup value will be in M18, that cell just to the left. And our lookup array is A3 to A12. Once again, we can make these absolute references. And my match type zero for exact match. Okay, so that provided the row number for index. Now we can provide the column number. Um, and this is just the data that we want. There's this return. We can we can go with two again to return the, the mass. And that should be it for our function. I guess I made a mistake. It looks like Excel will fix it for me. All right. And that is exactly what we wanted. We can, we can now change this, and it will update once again, just like the VLOOKUP function. And one, just like the VLOOKUP function, we can also copy this and, and paste it. Oop, but I, I did make one mistake in this, and that's that I didn't create an absolute reference for the lookup value. So this M18. So let's change that and copy it again. And now we can change our column number. And it will act just like the VLOOKUP function. The powerful thing about about the index function is that it's just a little bit more flexible, that it can look up both horizontally and vertically um, based on your needs. Um, so it can be a little bit a little bit more more practical and useful in more applications. Um, these these functions definitely take a little bit of practice with to understand what's going on and, and how to to format your uh, your function syntax to get what you need it to do. Um, however, once you've practiced with them and once you've once you've learned them, they can become extremely powerful and extremely useful to to show the data that you want to show and to to um, have a a more functional chart rather than just displaying large amounts of data. So the last thing that we will go over in in this video about functions is something that we can we can do to simplify our functions and make them a little bit easier to read. Um, because now if we're looking back at, at these functions that we've written, they're really big and they're filled with a lot of numbers and and unless we're going back and, and looking like okay like well where is A3 and where is S12 like okay so this these are referencing the, this chart right here. We can make it a little bit a little bit more intuitive. And that's by using what is called named ranges. So we can apply a name to this chart. 
right here that we that we had to reference a lot of times in our in our functions. Okay, so we can add a name for for this chart that we can reference in our in our functions later to make them easier easier to use and easier to read. Um, so we can come and select the the data that you want to name, and then come up into this box up here, and you can just type your name. So I'll go planet underscore data. And if you hit enter, now this selection is called planet data. Now, um, if you come down to this drop down later, you can see now that it includes planet data. If you select this, then it then it will select your range. Um, we can I'll add another one right here and call this one planets. So now we have these two named ranges that we can we can insert into our functions in place of of what we were using before. So A3 to S12, we can replace this with planet underscore data. And you can see it, it does exactly the same thing. However, it's a little bit easier to read. We can also replace this A3 to A12 with just planets. You can see also that it's coming up with suggestions of, of what I'm, it thinks I may be trying to type. Um, and you can select one of them with, with the arrow keys and hit tab to fill it in. And so now we've simplified this function a lot. Uh, and it's it's a lot more manageable to read. Um, we can see that we're we're search we're referencing this array of planet data, and we are searching for M18, which is this adjacent cell. We're searching it for it in the in the name of planets, um, and then returning a value associated with that. So these named ranges are are extremely useful to to simplify your functions and make them easier to to think about easier to process and, and handle, and especially easier to come back to later on if you need to change something, because it's so much easier to understand what's going on. It's a lot more intuitive to work with. So we hope that, that in this video we've covered a couple of, of tools that you can use to, to practice your, your functions and formulas and get better at them and understand them a lot better, because they are one of the, one of the most powerful things in Excel um, to help help you work more efficiently and help you to to create Excel documents that that work for you. Um, there are tons of resources online about different Excel functions and formulas and how to use them and in what situations you can use them. So if you ever get lost, feel free to 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 look them up online. There's also a lot of a lot of information in Excel itself. If you come to this formulas tab uh, there are a bunch of different categories of, of formulas that can be inserted. And in these categories, there are, there are hundreds of different functions for many different applications um, for whatever you may need, need to do. Um, and if you, if you insert one of these, then it brings up a little, little help section right here that helps you to fill in your function. Um, as well as a description of what it does and a link for more help. So there are a lot of resources about Excel functions. They're, they can be a little bit intimidating at first, but once you understand what's going on and how to use them, they can, they can really become an, an extremely powerful tool. Um, thank you for, for watching our video today. We hope that you have all the best luck with your Excel adventures. Thank you.